Hemochromatosis can be treated, and if it's caught early enough, damage to the organs can be averted and sometimes reversed. The treatment may seem medieval, but it's effective. The patient is bled, forcing the body to create new blood cells, and that uses up the stored iron. The procedure is called a phlebotomy. David Fleming has had countless phlebotomies over the years, but he says his liver has improved, and he's optimistic. He only wishes he'd known about hemochromatosis a lot sooner. The tragedy of hemochromatosis is that for many patients, the diagnosis comes too late. Tom Warder succumbed to cancer of the liver last July, just months after these pictures were taken. I feel very sad to think that I could have had Tom for a longer time, but also I'm very sad to think that we were married for nearly 50 years and for 25 of those years he battled every day. Marie Warder remembers her husband first became ill when he was 42. It started with diabetes that did not respond to treatment. He lost weight. He had violent mood swings. He got worse and worse. It was eight years before hemochromatosis was finally diagnosed. He had no memory. He was very, very confused. And it was only by the time that he had no eyelashes, no eyebrows, no body hair. Only then was he diagnosed, and that was just a miracle. Uh, we, we are told now that he was within 12 weeks of dying. After phlebotomy treatments, Tom Warder got better, but he never became completely well again. He suffered from liver disease and from arthritis, and then from angina. He'd go up, and then down he'd go again, then there'd be something else. But I think in his case, a lot of, of the damage was really too far advanced, you know? Murray Warder became determined that others would not suffer the unnecessary complications of hemochromatosis due to a late diagnosis. Thirteen years ago, she founded the Canadian Hemochromatosis Society. Her goal was to raise awareness and provide support to other patients. With no funding and only volunteer help, her home in Vancouver continues to be a center of information for patients and doctors around the world. This is a person who was told that she had too much iron, but it wasn't followed through. She wasn't told what that meant. Over and over again, the letters tell the same story. Here's a case of somebody who was ill for 10 years before he was diagnosed. What about the failure to diagnose hemochromatosis? Why does this happen? Dr. Paul Adams says one of the reasons hemochromatosis goes undiagnosed is many doctors don't know how to recognize it. Dr. Adams is an assistant professor of medicine at University Hospital in London, Ontario. His research on hemochromatosis has earned him an international reputation. I think there are two types of situations. One is the doctor's never thought of the diagnosis. He sees a patient with common complaints, arthritis, sexual dysfunction, uh, diabetes, and he doesn't think of hemochromatosis, so he doesn't order the appropriate blood test. The other situation is we find it in one family member. We suggest that their brothers and sisters be tested. And when their brothers and sisters go to their family doctor, they get the wrong test done. And even though hemochromatosis is a genetic disease, there are cases where patients haven't been told that other family members should be tested, including brothers and sisters, children and cousins. You will not develop problems with your liver or your heart. There are some patients with hemochromatosis. This patient was fortunate to be diagnosed before she had any signs of disease because she was alerted by her older brother. Her sister also has the disorder, two nephews, another brother. People who are helped the most are at the earliest stage of disease, yet the people we tend to diagnose are at the late stages of disease. So the usual scenario is a late diagnosis in one sibling with a tremendous benefit to a younger sibling who may be 10 years younger. The problem is there are thousands of people who do not know that hemochromatosis is present in the family and they're being missed. They're missed because they don't have obvious symptoms. They haven't yet developed diabetes or cirrhosis or any of the other telling complications. It's a disease that is somewhat sinister in the sense that it's lurking in the background their whole life and they don't know they have it until the damage has been already done. 
If only there was a simple way to screen everyone for the disease. Unfortunately, there isn't the one test that identifies hemochromatosis. Researchers are working on a genetic test, but in the meantime, doctors are left with blood tests that by themselves do not reveal the entire picture. There is a specific set of blood tests that can measure the amount of iron stored in our bodies. They indicate the patient's iron profile. The problem is there are other illnesses that cause high iron levels. Also, test results can be normal in a hemochromatosis patient whose iron stores have yet to reach high levels. In order to screen everyone without getting a lot of false positives or false negatives, the tests have to be a lot more specific. So, what's the answer? Well, Dr. Adams and Marie Warder agree that first of all, it's a matter of educating family physicians. They have to be on the alert for the patients who might be at higher risk, and they have to be persuaded that many of their patients may have the disease. Initially, the um, medical journals said that it was very rare. According to the authoritative textbooks that they were using until a few years ago, they would have figures like one in 20,000, sometimes one in 100,000. And even doctors I speak to today say to me, um, I've never seen a case. I never expect to see a case. It isn't that they have never seen a case. It's that they haven't recognized it when they've seen it because they haven't been looking for it. Warder has also found that even if they recognize the disease, many doctors are poorly informed. They believe that only older people suffer the effects of the disease, when in fact there are cases of children who've been diagnosed. Another example, Warder was told that she needn't worry about her daughter because women are protected by monthly blood losses. But it turns out her daughter does have hemochromatosis and she was only 32 when she was diagnosed. The index is that reliable that that... Should... It's been Marie Warder's mission to see that doctors and patients get the kind of information they need. It took years, but thanks to her efforts, Vancouver now has a hemochromatosis clinic, one of the few in the world. Specialists at University Hospital are working together to develop and share their expertise. Dr. Stephanie Ensworth is an internist and rheumatologist. She says that in the clinic, they are finding that if you look for it, hemochromatosis can be found much earlier than it generally has been found. But often, doctors aren't aware that some common everyday ailments could be the early signs of hemochromatosis. Patients may just feel fatigued or tired. A very common complaint is vague abdominal pain. Another early clue can be various joint aches but there is one early sign that is not at all vague. Actually, the arthritis of hemochromatosis can be really um, a specific uh, presentation in hemochromatosis in that uh, those patients can get a degenerative form of arthritis involving this index knuckle and this middle knuckle. And there are no other forms of degenerative arthritis that involve those two joints. But for some reason, that hasn't been emphasized, and a lot of people don't know that. While Dr. Ensworth agrees it's not feasible to test everyone for hemochromatosis, she believes there are many people who should be screened as a matter of routine. Family members of anyone already diagnosed, and then anyone who has any of the possible symptoms. We're trying to educate physicians about certain unu you know, uh, unusual types of abdominal pain. If they really can't uh, uh, figure out what's going on, maybe they should check the patient for hemochromatosis certain liver diseases, certain forms of arthritis, new diabetics should be checked for hemochromatosis, and uh, sexual medicine. They, um, those clinics um, should be screening some of their patients for hemochromatosis as well. Do you think hemochromatosis is taken as seriously as it should be? No, I don't. I don't really think that people realize that this disease is the, the complications of hemochromatosis are totally preventable if the patient is diagnosed early on. One of the things I think that perhaps hurts most is that my children have not known their father to be well. The unnecessary suffering, that's what frustrates me. And the fact that I've been at it so long and there are still people dying. Why is it that one can't reach these people before it's too late? The Canadian Hemochromatosis Society has prepared an information pamphlet. You can write for one. We'll give you the Society's address later in the program.